In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, we gather together, as always, in God's name, to celebrate God's love and God's care. Today we celebrate what is called Good Shepherd Sunday, because as we hear our readings, we see that beautiful image that is always throughout history been applied to God and then in the New Testament in a very uh, concrete way to Jesus to be the shepherd and certainly these days we need a shepherd to give us direction there are so many voices and so many contradicting reports and everybody is deciding what should be done and what shouldn't be done and it just makes your head spin and sometimes I purposely you know, just find myself grabbing the remote and cutting the TV off because if I hear one more word about how we absolutely have to stay in quarantine or we absolutely have to get out and lift it and how this is obviously the origin of coronavirus and this is not at all the origin, you go crazy. And it doesn't really help. But maybe that's because we're looking for a shepherd in the wrong places. Maybe while the people who should be doing their job to guide us socially, politically, health-wise, economically, don't yet seem to know what to do, and I don't mean to be rude, but who are obviously facing something that we've never faced before, what we need to do is to continue to listen to the Good Shepherd, who always knows what to do, who accompanies us, even in the craziest of times, who will remind us of what is important. So let us begin this celebration by calling to mind how difficult it can be and how often we look everywhere and forget to look for God. We're listening to everyone, but forget to listen to God. We complain to everyone, but we forget to complain to God. Why would you complain to God? If you love God that much and you live with God and share with God, you can't hide certain things. So let's think maybe of what we've been hiding from God, even if we didn't do it consciously. Let us ask God for pardon and for the grace and strength we need to be the very best we can be, even in these crazy and uncertain times. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray, my friends. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up. He stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and he proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all who are far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. is a thief and a marauder. The one who enters through the gate 
is shepherd of the sheep. The keeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own by name. front of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. They will not follow a stranger, they will flee, because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Even though Jesus used this My solemn word is this, I am the sheep gate. All who, come, who came before me were thieves and marauders whom the sheep did not heed. Whoever enters through me will be safe. That person will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel. this coronavirus. I want the end of all of this sickness and fear. I want all those sick people to get well. I want all those people mourning their dead to be comforted. I want people who are so worried and insecure for valid reasons about their finances and their whole life to have a security back of their jobs. I want our seniors to have a prom and to have a great dance and a party, and to walk in their caps and gowns, and to receive their diplomas. My gosh, when I begin, there seems to be no end of what I want. I want a large pepperoni pizza in a nice setting with some really good friends. I want to hit Cesar's over in Bristol, and then walk, whatever you call that, the pier, that's not really shore, I'm from Brooklyn. As long as there's water, we call it the shore. But walk by there. So what does that mean? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. When I think all of us want plenty of things, especially these confusing times, I want to kind of know what's going to happen tomorrow, which is really kind of... what was going to happen tomorrow. We just had that kind of false sense of security that, you know, we plan for the future and the future should try and, you know, more or less work out the way we planned it. Today, And of course, in Brooklyn, you don't often get to see sheep walking down, you know, Broadway with shepherds. But amazingly, I had the wonderful, not amazingly that I had the opportunity, but I had I had the amazing blessing of having lived uh, so many wonderful years in Algeria. Uh, where actually even the stole is from, and it's made from real sheep's wool from friends who their mom would actually spin it when they would sacrifice a lamb or something for a certain festival, a certain reason, they would skin it carefully, and then the mother hair and weave it into these uh, 
beautiful cloth, and then I gave the cloth to the sisters, who then made out of it uh, this beautiful stole and embroidered it in traditional Algerian uh, design. And so once mountains behind the city, which was right on the shore, Oran, uh, in Algeria, and we were up in kind of grassy hill country, and what do you think as we were driving by? So we got out of the car and sat down in the beautiful grass and of course I was just amazed at watching this. And these are the days before we had um, cell phones so I guess I really lived the moment and enjoyed it because I, I have to take pictures and videos and post it. I just was suddenly there with this amazing flock of sheep and these shepherds. Then after a while as my friend to talk and I just continued to be enthralled, one of the shepherds suddenly looked up and made the strangest kind of whistling sound that I wouldn't even try to make, you know, lucky for you. And he was like, well, whatever he did. And then I noticed throughout this huge mass of, you know, the sea of sheep, some of them looked up immediately through all these other sheep and even butted some to get out of the way and started toward where this man was making this really bizarre sound. And then in and he started going off in one direction. And what amazed me was that this huge number pushing their way through the other sheep started to follow him, but the other sheep Away. It wasn't that they all stayed in their little troop or their own little flock, but they just all mixed together looking for the best grass and the best whatever to feed on. Yet when they were called, they knew exactly who was calling who. And they went. And as I mentioned that to my friend, of course, being you know a Brooklyn boy, that was just too amazing. And my friend kind of having pity on me explained, you know, what he knew was just the everyday fact of life. He said, but then the shepherds, he said, they live with the sheep. You don't for dinner unless there's another shepherd who replaces you. But because it's so important for the flock to stay together, there might only be one or two shepherds for that flock and they take turns because they have to live with the sheep. They eat while the sheep are feeding and grazing also. When the sheep give birth, they are there and then they help and make sure
They know the presence of their shepherd, and they know it is with that shepherd that they are safe and they are protected. So even if they're suddenly grazing on this, you know, vegetation, and the shepherd says it's time to move on, they would never risk losing the shepherd and being on their own a comfortable place. And so they go to be with the one they know cares about them, defends them, is there for them. What voice do we know? What voice do we follow? There are so many voices calling to us all the time. The more money you have, obviously the happier you will be. These very foolish and arrogant voices tell us. The voice is telling us we need to be important. Number one. The voice is tell telling us to be important. The voice is judging us on our ex externals and telling us we have to be gorgeous and good looking and all. The voices who turn us in on And God calling us to be kind and gentle in a world that's not. Which voice do we hear? How do we know who our shepherd is? Who do we follow? The voices that are all about us? The voices that promise us an easy fix with money and gadgets and fame and Voices that tell us if things don't go the way we want, then we should be furious and angry, as if we are the masters of the universe. Or the voice that reminds us that we are loved. No matter what, we are loved and we are called to love and to be loved and to share that love. And that's certainly not easy. It's never been that easy. It's always been a struggle. And now in the time of this COVID-19, with all these new challenges and new ways of looking, new ways of listening to the voice of our shepherd in the midst of so many voices that seem to get louder and more confusing. How do we know where to go? How do we know where the shepherd is leading us? But we know the Lord is my shepherd. moving the minute their uh, respective shepherd call them, unless we live with God at every moment, unless we share with God, laugh with God, cry with God, yell at God, get angry at God. If you love someone and you're that close to them, how can you not? 
So if you're thinking, oh, it's time to pray, and you make a pious little, Our Father, Our Father, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, some pious little thing, and meanwhile inside you're terrified, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're depressed, that with God. If you're not telling that and celebrating that or complaining about that, you're just like hiding from God. There is no relationship. You're repeating some words you memorized as a kid. That's not what you do with the shepherd. That's not what the shepherd does living so intimately with the sheep. And we have that courage. And even when things look pretty miserable, imagine how many times uh, certain flocks must have been walking through desert areas, empty areas, and they're, you know, hungry. They just wander away from the shepherd because they know, well, this doesn't look very good now, but sooner or later, you know, we just have to trust, go day by day. And they arrive at the oasis. Henry Daniel Thoreau said, Fear not that your life will end. Rather fear that your life has never begun. And maybe today many of us are challenged to look at what our life is. What voices have we been following? Maybe we begin to realize that in many ways too much of our time has been listening to the voices of money, of power, looks of judgments about people on race or religion or color, that we have gotten so off track and now we're being called back. who will not lead us to the right place. We're always a bit too nervous, a bit too stressed, never totally satisfied because we are not becoming who we were meant to be. Maybe we're discovering now how to really live and what that means. And that's why now we need to be able to just a few moments ago even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even in these troubling days of the coronavirus, even with cancelled proms and cancelled graduations, or postponed, I should say, and then, of course, even more serious, even losing people we love, but following the shepherd in faith and in confidence. Having that shepherd to laugh with, to cry with, to yell at, to sit quietly and listen, to listen to the shepherd. How can God tell us? How can God show us? How can God lead us if we won't listen? If we won't look we can only know God's voice if we live with God, talk with God.
Dieu répliqua. Alléluia. So my friends, let us then, in faith and in confidence, together proclaim what makes us one. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, to hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now, my friends, with faith and trust in our loving God, let us present all of our prayers and our petitions. For all of us who are journeying in this valley of darkness, the uncertainty of the coronavirus time, that the Lord will calm our fears, that we will learn to listen to the voice of our shepherd, to see the love of our shepherd, to give us the guiding them and that our prayers and our love are with them to strengthen them and give them that little push as they follow the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. There are so many things to pray about. Why don't you take a moment and with your family around you, if you are so, why don't you share what else we should pray for? We present all of these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed be god forever by the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of christ who has humbled himself to share in our humanity we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Holy Father Lord of heaven and earth through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in heart. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator. Yet he has spoken your words to us, 
and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, the Good Shepherd, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy and to be glorified O god who love the human race and who always walk with us on this journey of life Blessed indeed is your Son, present here in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the gifts of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking in this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm in us the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, with all our bishops, priests, and deacons, and all your people. Grant that we, the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote ourselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that by sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them, following the Good Shepherd, along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Remember all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only speak the word and my soul shall be healed. For the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. And let us continue our prayer together. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd. Be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you so much for being with us as we continue to journey together these very uncertain times. It's my great joy to share with you that hopefully by next week we'll have everything uh, up and running. That, in fact, from the safety and prudent staying uh, in their own homes, we will though have, uh, starting next week, uh, the readers will be different students and faculty members from their own home now that uh, so many of the faculty, not me, it was a little tech challenged, but some other people have learned how to do this, what for me still seems like magic, where as we are here, we'll be able to also connect online with students and faculty from their home who will then be able to share the readings, some of the prayers. So in fact, we will even have more of a sense of our Holy Ghost family, God's family, to share with you and your family. So a wonderful blessing and something to look forward so that we can continue to grow deeper in our relationship with God by loving each other even that uh, of a distance but finding ways to share that love the Lord be with you bow your heads and pray for God's blessing may God who by the resurrection of his only begotten son 
was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go and proclaim the love of God by our lives. Alleluia, alleluia.